Everything's fine. And we are go. Welcome everyone to another episode of Dan Does Data. Tonight, rather than looking at an autonomous car, I saw this post about Google Data Studio Beta. Uh, this is sort of a data dashboard web tool that I haven't fiddled with. I just heard about it. Apparently, it's actually been out for a couple months. But I figured since it's a it's a thing and it's something different, a chance to take a break from a lot of the machine learning and a lot of the struggling with does this model make sense. Uh, I just wanted to try this and do sort of a let's learn with Google Data Studio. So if you go to datastudio.google.com and you are logged into your Google account, you can go there and check it out. You can follow along with me or you can do whatever it is that you like. But our goal today is just to see what this is about, see if this is something that's helpful or not. I typically tend to do more exploratory data analysis on my channel. Uh, so I'm curious how this is. There's going to be a lot of a lot of data displayed, but I'm curious how much information we will glean from that. That is always the difference. It's easy to make lots and lots of graphs, but what do you actually get out of them is the question. So it's got a nice little slick interface. You can make right, reports for these objects. And there's one down here that just says, welcome data studio, start here. So I'm gonna start there and just sort of walk through whatever this tutorial is. I have not looked at this before. This is all new to me, hopefully new to you. Maybe you're just checking out uh, data studio for the first time. Maybe you just wanna look up something. That's all this is. And it's, I imagine this interface is with Google Docs. You can share, you can open. I can view, I can full screen. I'm already full screened. I don't need that to full screen. It's got a concept of pages, which is interesting. Oh, you can watch a tutorial. You're doing that right now. You're already doing that. And connects to a forum. Okay, cool. View, edit, create data studio reports. You got charts and tables, and there's this view mode business. Mousing over the chart to see the data points. Yeah, so in, I've done this in YouTube before, like how many views do I have? And you can see over time what's going on. Could I got a column headed to sort? Oh, I like that this is, it's like embedded in the problem. There's some Cyrillic, some other stuff, some sessions, can I, that's super cool. Set the date and filter your data. Change the time frame using a date range control, which is this thing. Oh, so if we go way back in time, say February, include today. Yeah, include today, sure, that's, that's important to me. And does that, and then now there's, I don't know what channel this is from. That's interesting. You can see there's definitely some periodic cycle, probably daily, maybe weekly. 26 to 31, yeah, probably weekly. Oh, what is it? Oh, you can click on things? Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, so if we actually slim this down to just seven days, da, da, da. let's bring this up to November. This is a nice intuitive interface. I kind of like this. This will actually be eight days, but whatever. You can see a slight, slight interesting behavior. It tells you what day, and that's yesterday. Wow, this, like I poked at this yesterday. Hey Rick, how you doing? I'm not actually looking at autonomous cars tonight. I apologize if you were interested in that. I'm looking at something totally different. You can't make me, you can't make me work on it. I won't. I might later if I get through this quickly enough. Uh, feel free to say hello to the chat, anyone. Tell me I'm doing something stupid. All right, so you can set the date. Try to change the date and show the last seven days, including today. Oh, hey, that's I didn't actually read this, but that's what I ended up doing. That's kind of cool. Wait, wait, did I not include today? All right, yeah, it's include today. There we go. Ding. Oh, today's down. Oh, maybe this is like the number of people who have checked out Google Data Studio or one of their videos for Google Data Studio. That would not be surprising. What percentage of returning users were iPhone users? And the answer is 32. Oh, but, oh, returning, but you say returning visitor. Oh, you turned it off rather than on. Okay. This should be like green or something to indicate that it's distinctly checked. And so you say, aha, 36% of my people. Whereas my new visitors, it was like 33. Is that statistically different though? I don't know. You can just refresh. Others. That's neat. 
navigate through multiple pages. So there's this concept of pages here. Use the next page and previous page controls on the top left. So over here, you can sort of flip through the pages. I, for like something that's a website, I honestly think that's unnecessary. I get that they want to divide it up. Uh, but like a scroll, like I could just scroll through and I having the pages just be sections that are named that I can click to would be a little bit better. Can I just move forward? Can I do page down? Nope. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe you can. Hang on. You can just hit page down. That's nice. Page down is a win. You can't edit this report, but you can copy it. Uh, you must copy this report to continue the tutorial. All right, how do I do that? Copy this report. File, make a copy. Make a copy. Agree to the terms and conditions. Create the five multi-page reports. So there's like a free version of this, or you could pay money if you find you really like it, it's helpful for your company and your dashboarding, and I can share it. Yeah, sure, I accept. Please continue with your previous action. Cool. Resolve the missing data sources. Interesting. Resolve? No? None of that came up. Probably I need to open up this this file. Did not did I not make a copy? Let's try it again. Let's try making a copy again. Make a copy. Did I not click? Original data so oh okay. Sample, Google Analytics data, new data source, sample, Google Analytics data. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's let's keep the same data. Great report. Google Stadia Studio would like to, yeah, I will allow them to check this out. Hopefully this doesn't display anything untoward. Great report. Uh, we have a nice white screen now. Hopefully this is going somewhere. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're loading. Copy of Welcome to Data Studio. Start here. Dan does Data Studio. That's what it's going to be now. We're changing the name. Changing the game. Dan does Data Studio. Perfect. That's what I should have called this video. Oh, I'll have to rename it later. Okay. You edit, create Data Studio. Oh, that's page one. We already did page one. That's old. You can fiddle with all the properties here. Okay. First dialogue. So this is... Oh man, this is like you can move things around. So, I mean, this, this sort of looks like a PowerPoint slide at that point. But if it's got integrated data usage, that looks kind of cool. Yeah, so you can fuss around all this stuff. Can I make this thing go away? What is this? Edit. Ah, okay. So that makes that go away. Perfect. Data source is like a pipeline for your underlying data. When you first edit a copy report, you may need to add any data sources back to the report. This word has two data sources, one for analytics and one for Google Sheets. Add the data source. Manage data sources. Click and manage added data sources. This thing? Refresh data? Click add report. Is this just a file? New report now. View. Page. Help. Feedback. Did I miss something here? Click add to report. Manage added data sources. If I'm missing an obvious refresh data, is that what I want? It's page, pages. Can I right click? No, it's just like a regular web page. Page. What about what if I click this object? No? No. Owned by me. Dan does data studio. We'll come back here. So I gotta reload this whole web page when I navigate away ever so briefly. That's gonna be irritating. Apparently I have data here, and then clearly the data is there. I don't know if I have all the data sets. And like, apparently my screen is not wide enough to actually view this. Click plus. I'm not seeing your plus, pal. Uh, oh, you can insert bar charts. So it's like a typical office kind of document, LibreOffice or Open Office or MS Office or Google Docs. You can add all kinds of cool stuff. And manage added data sources. Data sources like a pipeline, yada yada yada. To add any data sources. Yeah, I got that. How do I get to manage added data sources? I'm not seeing it. 
tip, use the edit toggle on the upper right, switch between view mode and edit mode. Share, edit, yeah, I got that. Manage edit data sources, but not add it to the report. I just don't see where that is. This is my Google account page. It's not going to be like a page thing. You would think it's a file thing. New report. Share, view. Manage edit data sources is grayed out, apparently. Do I need edit to be on to do that? Okay. View. Whoa, view. Okay, so you need to edit on to be able to manage edit data sources. That could have said, go to view, then do this. Status used. Uh, data sources added to this report. Used in report action. Done. Okay. I thought I wanted one for Google Sheets as well. I don't see that right now, so maybe I can't. In manage, yes. This needs to say, add the data source under view. Yeah, that's super irritating. Yeah. Oh well. All right, next page. Charts visualize dimensions and metrics. That is naturally. Dimensions are categories of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dimensions are variables. <coughs> Add the user's metric to the time series. Sessions. This is kind of, yeah, I want that not in the way of my graph. Thanks. It's like time series chart to the right. That's this thing. Hey, the time series properties appears on the right. Hey, cool. In the data tab, which is this one, click plus to add a metric also known as add another variable and they wanted us to add users which is the thing we have user timings do, do, do. user this is not in it's like almost I don't know what order these are in this should just be in alphabetical order that would make my life easier users user users perfect Ding. ah so you can now compare the sessions with the users if I click out of this, oh boy. If I turn off edit, then I can see. So some users are looking at it, looking at this multiple times, but it looks like most users are looking at it once and are unique. There are not actually many more sessions than there are users. And for all we know that there, there's, I don't know, one or two power users who are just looking at it a hundred times. Use the style tab to add some flair to your charts. This is, you should not, don't do that. Read, uh, read Edward Tuft, the visual display of quantitative information. The less ink you need to use, it's probably better. Uh, in fact, like this is pretty good actually. I don't, this grid in behind is okay. But, like sessions, users, line here, line here, some stuff, some stuff. Like this tells me what I need to know, which is there's more or less one to one. There's a few more sessions than users, not every user session is unique, is a unique user, but it's mostly that. But what's another metric? What about new users? That was a thing we could add. Let's take a look. User, new users. Ah, so we can also tell that most of our users are new users. It's kind of an idea we're going to get. So that's actually interesting. And most of the time, I don't know what new what that impli what that really means is it like new that day or just someone we've never seen before i don't have a sense of what what this data is lines bars oh i only did bars for that one one thing okay uh how do i make everything a bar that's that that's cute that i can just change that how do i uh can i say for users oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy how do i change it for sessions how do i change it for the other one? Oh, sessions too okay Ding ding. And you can do this. You could label this axis on the right instead of the left. If they were on radically different scales, that would be useful. Okay, that's actually super unhelpful to understand. Lines is actually not bad. Do they have points though? Just points? Line weight, line series. I don't want none. Show points. Yeah, that's what I want. That's that's how I like to look at it. Look at my graphs. Unless I have a compelling reason to believe uh, one element is connected to an X, which in a time series you might. That's cool. Okay. And let's change this one. None. Show points. Bing. What's cumulative? Oh, cumulative is going to sum it up over time. 
Doesn't really make sense here. So that's neat. You can add trend line. What is this? Linear exponential polynomial. That's not going to work out well because there's this periodic behavior here. Check it out. Linear. Is it there? Oh my gosh, it is. It's super hard to see. Um, make it orange. There we go. Oh, let's crank up the weight like five. Just to emphasize that it's you know not not a very accurate line, but you know upward, upward. That's good. That's super cool. Is there a data that's different? How easy is it to kill one of these? Yeah, kill, kill. Add a metric. Social interactions. I want something that's like totally offbeat. Exceptions, perfect. Crashes. That's what I want. This should be on a wildly different scale. Okay, that's good. Style. Series 2. Show me axis on the right. Oh, but you won't. Oh, it's zero over this whole period. Never mind. Not interesting. I thought maybe they was just small. I'm not not thrilled that I can't get information on the graph while I'm in edit. I have to like go back from edit mode to do this. Uh, we have a thank you from the audience. Uh, you're thanking me, Kilo Syria Alpha. I want to thank you for getting help out of these videos. And I hope this one isn't too too dull since it's not machine learning. It's just figuring out this data dashboard. But uh, finding out, learning under how to understand uh, any tool can be difficult, even if it's a GUI. Like at least in a GUI, you can explore what's going on. Learning a GUI might be easier than learning some programming library. But when you want to do things at scale, you're sort of going to have to understand the APIs in the actual library itself. Okay, we've been playing around with that enough. Let's move on to the next thing. Add charts from the toolbar or insert menu. To add a chart, shape, or control, or anything, click the toolbar icon. Select a component from the insert menu. One of the, oh, one of these guys, the toolbars, or insert, and you insert your favorite thing. Uh, cool. Add a scorecard to this report. I'm not sure what they mean by scorecard. Not sure, let's do it. Uh, let's put one here. Oh, geez. Sessions. Let's put it over here. Oh, draw a new scorecard. X marks the spot. Whoops. Oh, nope, not what I wanted to grab. Not what I wanted to grab. Oh, gosh. That's what I get for not reading the directions right away. There we go. That's much nicer. Dang it. You know what? Nope. That's going away. That's in the way. It's gone now. Now it's gone. That's what happens. I like the little bit of snap that you get. And let's change. Oh, we should. Can I? Yeah, let's kill the X marks the spot business. There we go. And data. I don't want sessions. That's silly. We want new users, they say. Let's do new users. User, new users. Boom. Look at that. A little bit big. There we go. You could probably, yeah. I dig that, like, it physically moves it around for you. Okay, select that metric, use this scorecard style tab to format it to match the one for sessions. Oh, didn't, I was just wondering, can you, how do I make it match the other thing? Use this to move it a minute. Okay, but how, I can't just copy paste, like, the style. I gotta do this manually because we're going to have some serious issues. Auto, 32, so 32 pixels tall is what you want. Let's do 32 pixels. Bing! Okay. Uh, the question is, does this actually line up? Well, it does, more or less. All right. Oh, this background is slightly different. It's super hard for me to tell at the angle I'm at. Uh, background, Phil? Are they both that way? Hang on. It's like when I have this one selected, I can tell that the background is slightly different, Phil. Jesus. Oh, nope, nope. Too much. Too much. Lighter. Need that lighter. Still way too much. I need it even lighter. That's still way too much. No, it needs to be like lighter than the gray around it. 
Just trying to, oh, there's are more. Oh my gosh, my monitor must be terrible. I can't even. I think that's right. Maybe one more level. Good gravy. That's just white. That's just white. Okay, so that was probably right. Like, and if I have to like lean down here to see. All right, whatever. That's fine. Make both scorecards show compact numbers. What are compact numbers? Ah, so it automatically summarizes it for you into a, a human sort of format. So this is sort of like on the Linux command line. You can say, hey, show me file sizes using human. So it'll say whatever, whatever, K, whatever, whatever, meg, whatever, whatever, gig, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's nice. I don't know if this is actually better. Like, often seeing all the digits is actually kind of helpful and gives you an immediate sense of scale because just from the, the literal width of the number, you get a sense of, oh, that's 10,000-ish. Like, it's like a log scale built in. It's very nice. Ugh. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, we're on page 37. We are, we are on, on schedule, believe it or not, for a one-hour one hour tutorial. Of course, there's a bunch more sample things to fit, fiddle with. All right, set the default range property. I thought we did this at some point. Oh, it's a default date range. Ports have a default time frame. You change this by setting the chart's date range property. Viewers of your report can't change this. Haha. Uh -huh. To give your viewers of your report a way to change date, use a date range control. Select the time series. We're looking at the data. And scroll down to the default date range. Scroll down to default date range section. Data source. I mean, here's the time dimension date. Did I not scroll down? Add a time series filter. Select custom. Do they want time dimension? No, they don't want time dimension. Am I missing something obvious? It is always a possibility. Oh, default date range. Derp. Custom. Uh, so I was missing something obvious. Change the last 14 days. All right, that's fine. Uh, I love this nice convenient. Just change it here, and you can. I love this kind of setup. From this to this, and this to that. Oh, check include today. Oh no, everything's ruined. Perfect. And click apply. Change the comparison period to previous period. Change the comparison period to previous period. Oh, this thing. Not sure what this is. Set the date range. Sessions. Oh, I see. Sessions, previous 14 days. I see. It sort of adds a faux data series for you. Let's make this bigger. Like, a lot bigger. This thing. I don't need this thing. This. I don't need this. You. I like that I can just mangle their their tutorial. <laughs> make my things bigger. This This chart is what's important. For whatever you're trying to say. This chart needs to be bigger, much bigger. There you go. And so you see that over the past two weeks, you've uh, had a good number of sessions, more than most of the previous two weeks, except for recently. Is this line up here? Uh, the what's something that's, let me turn off edit mode. Maybe that's what I need. Okay, so this bottom axis is the current two weeks. Whereas you can hover over this and see, aha, this is this. So that's November 8 versus October 25. And that's October 26. OK, so those just happen to. This light blue line just happens to be pretty close to this line. October 26 versus October 25. October 26 on the dark blue, October 25 on the light blue. That's kind of cool. And you could add all kinds of other stuff, I'm sure, too. That's cool. All right, what else we got? Set the filter property. You can limit data shown in a report by setting the filter property. Viewers of report can't change this. Use the filter control. All right. Filter data. Where's the filter, filter, filter? Filter, down there. Time series filter. Add a filter. Uh, oh wait, did I? I might have did something different here. Select the table on the right. Oh, they want me to filter on this. Whoops. Uh, yes, data scroll down Then click on mobile device model table filter mobile device model. Oh, that's this thing Yeah, sure. 
change the expression to iPhone. Change the expression dimension, match type, expression. Sure, iPhone. Save, and this will call up, yes, anything in whatever that data series is, page views, mobile device model, I should say, mobile device model, that matches that filter, iPhone, will come get pulled up. So actually, we can filter this a different way. Come on. Uh, instead of iPhone, it was Nexus or whatever. What did you say, Samsung? Just another phone that people have. Nothing, okay. This is where like having some exploratory data just like, show me all the all the filters. You know what, don't show me any filters. Give me nothing, show me all the top things. Yeah, iPhone, iPad, not set, Nexus. And this has one to 10 of 1,400-ish. Ah, oh, come on, can I not? I wanted to, oh, I'm in edit mode, gosh. This is, this is almost, uh, it's like I'm using a Vim user. Edit mode versus use mode. Like there's this SM stuff, there's Opera Mini. All these SMs, Xbox One, all this other stuff that you could try to. Uh... In fact, I have an idea. Let's filter, let's do a really simple filter. So we, I want to only show ones that include the expression Z. Somewhere in them they have the letter Z. And I bet, yes. So you see these weird things. If for whatever reason you're interested in it, there's 48 of them total. Again, let's, you know what, that's gone. This chart, now bigger. Him biggin. Oh, now I can look at more, no? I bet you can look at more than 10 at once. But yeah, rows per page, there we go. So I could say 20, and is this just gonna shrink them? It's a little unresponsive here, but I'm also streaming video at the same time. Cool. Uh, it said 20, but I still only see 10. Do I just, is it not big enough? Is that my problem? There we go. Now it's like over this other thing, but whatever. Interesting, there's like little lines cutting. Oh, I see, this is on top of that. Is there a way to order? Bring forward. Hey, hey. no, there's got to be a bring to front. There we go. Because now you can't read any of this at all, but that's fine. Next page. Page down. Boom. I let my. I keep chat open on another window and I let it go to screen lock. Hang on. Okay. We're almost through this. Using multiple data sources in the same report. Every chart or control report has a data source. You select the default data source and create a report. You can add many different data sources. That's good. Add data from Google Sheets. Draw a table in the gray box to the right. Draw a table here. Table, this thing? Yeah. That's a good design, that like the grid-like thing is a table. Doink. The data source section, click sample. Google's analytics data source. In Data Source Picker, browse the search for sample world population data, something, something, something. Yeah, let's add this to the report. So that sort of loads it in and it's invi oh jeez, invalid dimension. Click invalid dimension. Hey, replace it with country. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I liked invalid dimension. Metric, invalid metric. Replace it with population. Yeah, let's try that. Ah, I see. So you've got, I mean, you're saying dimension versus metric, but these are really, I guess to me, they're pretty similar things. They're just data, they're columns in some table here. Like instead of country, I, oh, I say year, I see. So this data set is more complicated. It's more like a database. So I must have data on the population of every country for every year. So China has, according to this, 13 billion people, which has got to be the sum over all, over all years in this data set, which is pretty funny. And that's why they're having this, add a filter for table years equals 2014. Otherwise, population is the sum of all years. I did not actually read that before coming to this conclusion. 
What is what is missing? There's something. Oh, this is separate. What what is this? Text properties. Oh oh oh. oh. Text pro you're dead. Text properties. Boom. Gone. No more. I want more space for my table. Gotta have more space for my table. Uh, yes, we want a data filter because we only want to look at one year. So table filter. Add a filter. Add a filter. Dimension year equal to yeah sure. Contains regex. That's funny. Uh, whatever some expression is. So they said 2014. Let's say 2013, because I think it was 2005 to something, to 2014, yeah. Ding, there we go. System error. Oh boy, oh boy. And dimension, add, add a filter, otherwise population. All right. Dimension, year, equal to. 2014. Great. More. System error. Server encountered internal errors unable to complete your request. That is not very helpful. Alright, so what is going on with our error? I have this year filter thing. Include, exclude. Match type equal to. Do I need to say it's a string? Is that the problem? Well, uh, but the year really shouldn't be a should not be a string. Equal to what about just contains? Maybe the equal to, it's doing some string versus integer problem, and it's being wacky. Hey, what do you know? That was the problem. Year equals 2014. Mm, year equals does not really give you quite what you want. That's doing, that's got some confusion of string versus integer. But contains, which just forces whatever it's going to be, says it's a string. Uh, then it's going to be fine. Cool. Save. Now that's 2014, we have some populations. China has about 1.3 billion people. India has 1.2. I actually thought China had more people. I thought it had about 2 billion. But these are roughly, roughly correct numbers, I know. The United States has, yes, a little over 300 million. Indonesia? I did not know Indonesia had 250 million people. Right on. Uh, it's kind of funny if you plot like country size versus population. The United States is actually number three on both. Like the biggest countries are Russia, then Canada, then United States. It's just funny that somehow the U.S. ended up being number three in both. Data sources, the 30,000 foot view. Data source is like a pipe to your data. Well, it's like a funky, all right, I guess maybe the data source can be updated later. Create a new data source using one of the available connectors. Ooh, writing new connectors all the time. Sheets, analytics, YouTube, BigQuery, other stuff. I don't recognize this logo. And more! Oh, and the and more is uh, just a text thing. I'm getting rid of it. Nope, there's no more and more. Oh, is, these, are, these are like grouped together. You can move this whole thing. Oh, maybe you can move this whole thing. Uh oh. Maybe I can't move this. There we go. Or you can just look at this and say, I don't know what that is. It's gone. Nope, not anymore. Now you can no longer get whatever that data source was. Sorry. Okay, add a chart using your own data source. Well, maybe. Draw a new chart of your choice on the right. On the choice properties, select data. Chart of my choice. Eh? Let's... Oh, so many possibilities. Bullet scatter chart. There we go. Also known as a scatter plot. All the same thing. Doink. Create new... Data source. And I want to create new data source. Oh boy. YouTube Analytics. AdWords. Let's go with YouTube Analytics. I have a YouTube channel. Requires authorization. Yes, that is okay. Yep. That is now connected. Uh, sure. You are now seeing YouTube analytics from the YouTube channel that you are watching right now. That doesn't blow your mind. I don't know what will. So dimension. So this is sort of like the, the country. Uh, is live stream. That's not really a good dimension to use. Uh, and all, everything's a live stream, so. Date. Yeah, it's like a date. Versus 
the metric of like views or something. This is going to be a reasonable, reasonable thing to do. Metric Y. Oh, I had actually I didn't really want to scatter plot. Can I change the type? From oh I can. No, no, not the color. I want to change the type. Do I just have to make a new thing to change the type? It's gonna be annoying. Not gonna like it. Uh, metric X, I guess, will be date. I guess it won't be date. Huh. Hang on. Views. All right. It's gonna be watch time versus views. Or on various days, apparently. I'm not sure. Not sure what the date is doing for me in this context. I guess I can set a custom date range here. All right, this thing's also in my way. I need more room for my data. This thing, this chart, this needs to get out of my way too. This text, text, get out of here. You're gone. No more. Oh no! Deleted my chart, that's what I get. Okay, that's fine. So you can see views over watch time for presumably each one of my videos, I guess, or on particular days. Hang on, let's, I guess each one of these must be a day over the past 28 days. <laughs> this is just a weird graph. <laughs> so on a given day, say October 20th, there were 315 views and the total, the watch time was five minutes, five hours. I'm not sure what this, this metric really is. I know that on a given day, there's about 24 hours of total view time. So I'm not sure, not sure what's going on here. That's amusing. Let's go, let's go back into edit. Let's change, let's change that a little bit. You know what, let's just, just get rid of that. Clear out some of the space here. Set up a time series. That's, we'll look at like views over time. Data. Uh, no, not that. We want to use YouTube Analytics. There we go. Invalid dimension. Yes. Uh, date. And the metric will just be views. There we go. And so this works smashingly. You can see the views over the past month or so. Turn off editing so we can actually look at this. Turn off editing. Oh, there we go. Is there just a button I can use to turn off editing? Not excuse me, not a button, a key, key control. All right, maybe I'll look at that later. But you can see, I love that I, it just highlights whatever I'm doing. That I can see, oh, oh this October 26th was a big day for views. You'll notice a periodicity seven in my views a weekly, because Tuesday is the big day. That's when the streams are on. That's right now, you're right there. You are in the video. Okay, so we added our own data set. That was cool. I haven't uh, seen anything earth shattering just yet. Uh, but this is, you know, kind of fun. This is a better way of playing around with simple data sets like this than some other things. Try adding dimensions and metrics to these charts. Maybe I will. Maybe I will click editing again. Gah! It's good that there is a button that I'm not constantly always like this and dragging things around. Use geodimension to visualize data in the real world. You mean use it to visualize spatial data on a globe? That's also super convenient that you just get for free. Like, hey, here's a map of the globe. Can I change the projection? Tell me I can change the projection from Mercator to something else. Max color value, mean color value, data list value? Oh, I don't think you can. That is unfortunate. I really would have wanted to. And you probably got to have your data set to have a particular, it's got to have a country tag and things that have, have a particular thing. Oh, I wish I could change the projection though. If I click on it, make report level. I don't know what that means. Geo map filter, add a filter. What kind of filters can I do? Like, what if I say, oh boy, content and words. Isn't there a country? All right, never mind. Let me shrink that up. Bloop. Oh, wrong way. Send that over there. Out of the way. 
sessions versus page views, yeah, scatter plot, standard thing. This is a little weird. Yeah, there's so much of your data is bunched up here. Can you change the axes to be logarithmic? I guess that's a style thing. Uh, log scale, perfect. Because I think that might help clarify some of this on the x-axis. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it will not clarify anything. So with the log scale, geez, there's so much other garbage on here. So much other garbage. Just want to look at the picture. The picture tells me everything. Yeah, if I turn off editing. Maybe I wanted log scale in the other way, log y. Yeah, let, me, let me try that again. I might have got confused of which one is which. Log scale that. Oh, geez. So now they're log log plot, which is a thing you can do, and that makes sense sometimes. That does not, does not compute. So you can get a better sense of what's going on down here in the smaller part of the data set, in the larger part. Whereas if you do this, like, you don't really know what's going on down here. It's dominated by these few super huge values for whatever reason. These handful of days when there's a ton of page views and a ton of sessions. So maybe you want to do this. Or maybe you just want to restrict your axes to look at, I don't know, 100 versus 100, honestly. Actually, let's do that. Let's say, let's go to 100. Let's go to 100. And let's take away all the log scales. That still isn't helpful. Ah, uh, so this is definitely a logarithmic kind of behavior where most of the data is clustered up in a chunk over here and like whatever scale you put it at you're gonna have a couple outliers so let's change it to 25 by 25 you're gonna see this the same I'm 90 percent sure you'll see the same kind of behavior yeah you see a clump over here you know like one or two outlier guys here and you know what let's divide by like four or five again uh, so let's do five and five and you're probably gonna see similar behavior uh, well, at this point, it's two. We're dealing with like integers, so that's one, two, three. So it's you just see this uh, grid structure now. You don't get that same, quite that same behavior. But check it out. Doesn't this graph look kind of similar to this graph? Yeah, yeah. Little blob, some stuff. Doesn't that look similar to this little blob, some stuff? That's the log log makes it easier to understand. So in the log log world, like this is sort of a linear relationship, makes that easier to understand. Whereas if you do this, yeah, that's not so helpful. Cool. All right, what do we got going on over here? Bar chart. Bar chart with things that are in the way. Pairs metrics using bars. So instead of plotting a single point at a particular location, you fill up all the area underneath it as well. It can be helpful for easily, like, give it, helping your brain see, like, oh, this one is much, much bigger than that, that one. Even though I can see over here, like, oh, this is taller than that. Like, it helps your human brain see that this is bigger than that. As far as where this is, where this is coming from. This is how people are getting to whatever this place is. That's kind of cool. I don't think I have anything fancy to do with this. Yeah, you can fuddle around with the date range. Pie charts. I'm not a big fan of pie charts. I'm going to be honest. Uh, there is a certain sense in that they help you see like what something is as part of a whole. But the area, the like physical area occupied by an object is like the square of its actual importance. And so things that look small, like this 6%. Oh, no, that's not, that's, right. that's not true. That's not, I lied. That was a small lie. Sorry, that was a lie. It is, it is still linear, because you're just used cutting out sectors. But I don't particularly like it. I find it's a little harder to see, to compare. Like, I don't have an immediate sense of, like, oh, 31 and 46. Like, I can tell this one's a little smaller but it's hard for me to see how much. And like these little ones aren't even labeled. Like sure, if I go here, I'm sure I can find out. That's 1.1%, that's 1.3, but that'd be hard for me to guess. 
Whereas if I change it to a bar chart, say, how do I change it to a bar chart? That's what I want to do. Seven slices. No, I just want, can I, if I click on bar chart, does it change to bar chart? No. There needs to be a way to change to whatever. And if I lose a bunch of formatting along the way, that's fine. Oh, this is that same bar chart, isn't it? No, this is sessions versus page views. This is, what is this? Data, just sessions. So if we come over here, we nuke page views. Okay, this is that same information, just in a much more useful format. So you can see, ah, most of it's coming from YouTube about, you know, drop 15K, oh, and you got Google here. So this is two thirds as big as that, which you can get over here, but I gotta look at the numbers to understand that over here. I can just get a sense, oh, this is smaller. Well, let's see if we can take away the numbers from this and then see if you how you feel about it. Da, da, da. Single color, what is this? What's this? Oh, that's dumb. Legend, right, bottom, none? No, I do want a legend, the legend is fair. Label, not the legend, slice label, none. Yeah. Now try to, now try to guess what percentages these are. If you have to read the text, then you might as well just have the text. Or maybe you consider a different format. I can tell like, well, this is a little less than half. This one is you know, about third. I would guess a little more than a third, honestly. So this does have the advantage of showing you the sizes of things relative to an overall size. You can get the same effect in a bar chart if you just use a rectangle instead of a, a circle and you just pass things in lines, but I, I strongly prefer to bar charts for most, vast majority of, of uses if I'm gonna do this. Although honestly, I use scatter plots most often because I don't, I don't really care about, about this. I'm gonna look at this and just get some really quick estimate of like, whoa, what's going on here? What's actually happening? And then I'll understand. Okay. But here you can see like it's dominated by YouTube strongly supported by Google. There's a couple of these other guys, direct and mail.google, and there's a bunch of other things. That's, that's sort of what you're getting from this information, which you also get from this. I guess if you're not worried about the explicit values as much, the bar chart actually isn't bad. Because that tells you there's these two giant categories, there's these other three categories, others. Ah, so that's something you don't see over here. You just get the sum of all the rest. Two big categories, two small categories, and a bunch of other smaller still categories. That's cool. Okay, bullet chart. See how well your data performs against a target. This is not something I'm explicitly familiar with, this bullet chart format. Is this a thing I can... Let me just play with it and see if I understand. Can I move this target around? No. Is, is 60K the target? It's like a charity fund, fund, uh, fundraiser thing where something fills up, I'm guessing. I mean, I guess I get it. It's, it's a chart where you draw a line at the target. Let me guess, data, range limits, show target. If you don't show the target, you're not showing anything. So if the target was 100,000, you would see we are not meeting the target. We are not there yet. All right, that's, that's vaguely interesting. I haven't come up against that a lot. I'm like, meeting quarterly numbers is not something that I try to try to use too many brain cells on. All right. This is what, views or sessions or something? Oh, I see, I see. These are actually kind of cool charts. I kind of like these. So these are similar to scatter plots. There is a time series of a certain type, but the area in between is how big something is. So like this blue, whatever this is, reference referrals from Google or whatever, you can see, aha, uh -huh, there were 6,000 of them. And then there was another thousand or so, the gap between here were this other one. And finally, you see another 3,000 gap here. So you can see this one kind of drops. This can be helpful, it can also be kind of confusing. Like it looks like they're all dropping here when really like it's blue that's losing a lot of the, a lot of its uh, count. And so these others just kind of have to drop to pick up the slack. 
this can be a good way to view uh, changes of like a distribution over time. Like if whatever you have has to sum to one, like they're all the categories in a pie chart, um, then the total size is never going to change. And it can be a little more helpful. Although when a certain, like the bottom category goes down, everything else kind of has to, it'll have that same downward looking trend, then that can be, that can be misleading. So that's something to be very careful about. All right, what's on the last page here? We've flittled around to this, we've wrecked this page horribly. Your turn, my turn. Create a report, use file new, start a new brand new report. Need help? You can ask them. Well, that's cool. This is off the page a little bit. If I edit, maybe I can get at it. There we go. To return home homepage, click Data Studio. Well, that's cool. File, let's go, let's, let's just go and file new report. Again, blank white screen. That is what it is. All right, almost there. Brand new spanking report this is what you get. And I could take like my YouTube analytics and I could start doing stuff. Like the area chart that they had. Do one for me. And this is things that like in actual YouTube you sort of get for free. I have no idea what this stuff is. Those are different videos. That's what those are. Oh my gosh. External video ID. Break down dimension. Break it down now. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, country code might be more interesting. There we go. And the metric is views. So you can see over time, over the past month specifically, uh, where I'm getting most of my views from certain countries. And of course you see like the Tuesdays when the stream happens right now. I did not stream last week, so that's why there's this gap but I'm streaming today, and that's not quite here yet. We're all about two days behind. And so you can see most of my viewers come from the United States, which is not surprising. Uh, and you're also going to see a lot of viewers coming from populous countries. So if you divided these by sort of the population of that country, you might get a better metric for uh, how many people from that country, what is the popularity of my channel in that country. But then you got to get down in the weeds and you're wondering, well, but how many people in that country have internet? How many people in that country have might be interested in my channel. So that's the really thing. How many of the people who might be interested in my channel from that country are actually watching? This doesn't give you all that. Just because this gives you a very high level information. But this being English language broadcast, you'll see a high representation of English speaking countries. And so that makes sense. All right. I think that is actually all I'm going to do tonight. I'm probably not going to look at Data Studio uh, again. It does look like a, a slick. Uh, data dashboard and for making fancy reports is probably a cool thing maybe useful for a little bit of exploratory analysis uh, for my purposes however I pro I just want to I want to get my hands on the actual numerical data and then I'm gonna want to do crazy things to it uh, all kinds of computations and I didn't see that here maybe I missed it maybe that's in a tutorial I have not watched yet uh, but like if I can add up all the English speaking countries, if I can add US to Great Britain to Canada, uh, then I can maybe get some more information like, oh, in these countries, I, I'm doing very well, but I don't see how to do that here. There might be a way, there might not. Uh, so this was sort of a different Dan Does Data. This is Dan Does Data Studio. And just to take a break from the other stuff, I saw this just came out. So I hope this was kind of helpful to people. And uh, if you can make these numbers go up, that would be really good, more views. That is always helpful. That means we're helping more people learn. And that is what I'm all about. So that's all we got tonight. I'm going to sign off. If you're in North America, if you're in the United States, please go out and vote today. Uh, if not, uh, I hope you have the chance to, to vote later. All right. Stay safe in the data mines. Have a good night.